Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of On the Bench. And this is where, well, we're not actually on a bench, we're in front of a bench, but you get the idea. Mm-hmm. On a bench where we sit together and we discuss various uh, various topics. Ravina and I discuss various topics. So last time we covered what topic? So last time, my friends, we covered um, the long and complicated history uh, between Russia and Ukraine mm-hmm. and how that explains, you know, how we got here. And most importantly... What do we have as possibilities for peace between these two countries? I would highly recommend checking out that episode. That was a good episode. Very insightful. Really good discussion. I learned a lot. Um, and so today, one of the things, we're going to pick a little bit of a lighter topic. Um, and one that I really didn't know much about. So I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Um, this is, I don't know if you'd call it a religion. Um, but what would you call it? Animism. Animism, you know, some people would argue that it's a religion, but really it's like a belief system or a philosophy, I would say. Okay, but before we get into it, like, how is it different from, say, what we might know as a traditional religion, like, say, Christianity well, or, or... Hmm. All right, so, a tra- so like, let's, let's just take Christianity, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, Christianity is kind of what you think of as a religion because you definitely believe in one God. Mm-hmm. You definitely, you know, it's very like found, it's very like set in stone mm-hmm. how you think. You get it? Mm-hmm. Whereas animism is a little bit more flexible in thinking, as we will see. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's more about like less about like worship and like going to service every day, but more of like I believe that the natural world, everything in this natural world has a soul. Mm -hmm. So it's more of the belief, whereas a traditional religion has more of like the I go to church or I go to a temple or I go to a synagogue or Mm -hmm. I go to a mosque or whatever type of worshiping component. Animism is less about that Mm -hmm. and more about what do we do to respect the beauty that is the natural world around us. Mm. Okay. Does that make some sense? It does. It does. Um, So what do I do to celebrate the beauty that's around us? And um, so are there, well, first, before we talk about, are there ways I would do that? Who, who would be some of the folks or examples of where it got started or who practices it today? So um, it's again, because it's like a more of a belief system, Mm -hmm. it doesn't have a very well documented history. Okay. It's also unfortunately because of the Ever present consequences of colonization. Okay. Of how that history was kind of erased from a lot of people's minds. Mm-hmm. Um, but, well, maybe I should start where it got started and where it's still practiced today is in many parts of Africa, Asia, North America, Australia, and the broader um, Oceania region. Okay. And there wasn't, like I said, there wasn't really like a founder per se. Mm-hmm. It was more of just this idea of all these different tribes because. If you know anything about native, like if you know anything about like pre-industrial age, mm-hmm. you know that agriculture was a big, big, big thing. I mean, okay. like pretty much, there were no factories. There was none of that carbon emitting, climate change stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there was nothing that there was no industrialization, so it was all about right. farming. Okay. So naturally, people had a very high regard and respect for nature because literally, without nature, you couldn't survive. You couldn't survive. Couldn't survive. Right. I mean, like you would. You, mm-hmm. would, you would starve to death. Right. Um, so that's why people really classify it as that type of belief system. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really like how it got started. Got it. So a belief, yeah. a connection to nature. Yeah. Celebration of all things beautiful in nature. Yeah. Um, I wish it was still, still that way today. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So, so then if if I wanted to say practice animism, what what are some of the traditions that might help you recognize so, this is animism. There are some well-known traditions. Mm-hmm. One of them is called Baun Bang Phi. Okay. Right. What is Baun Bang Phi? All right. So that is actually it's a Vietnamese uh, word that translates to ro- like the rocket launching, basically. Okay. And what the what this tradition is is it's basically like people launch these rockets up in the air mm-hmm. and it, they're like homemade rockets people make them out of all kinds of things paper it's really great it's cool to see the creative ways that people will come up with these rockets mm-hmm. um but they'll launch them into the air and it's a way of saying a prayer mm-hmm. to 
the basically the spirits, the powers that be that control the rain. Gotcha. A lot of people will do the ceremony when it's well, you know. I can yeah. do um yeah, well a lot of people will do this when it's like raining too much okay. or when it's maybe flooding or when a harvest is slow or when it's dry and it's said that the rocket launching into the air actually represents that prayer being sent to that spirit. Oh, okay, okay. So what are some other examples of, of traditions that you do within animism? All right, so then, so another like um, example is Kwan. Mm -hmm. or, and Kwan, um, they basically tie, um, Kwan is basically, not they don't, that's a different, sorry. They, tie, uh, they are able to, the body is made up of 31 Kwan. Okay. And Kwan are basically like, spirits that control every organ so they're not really called anything in particular but there's a spirit that controls your heart there's a spirit that controls your stomach there's a spirit that controls your lungs and everywhere else in your body okay and any time that anyone's either you know because again think about medicine at this time mm -hmm. you know but so anytime there's a anyone experiences any type of emotional or physical challenge mm -hmm. um it's believed that a Kwan is out of place. Mm. So people do the ceremony whenever people are recovering or whenever people fall ill. Um, and basically it just consists of like praying to mm -hmm. the spirits mm -hmm. and praying for the Kwans to be put back in place. And it's believed to be that the spirits will hear you. Mm -hmm. um, and if they're, if the spirits are not angry, which we'll get to how the spirits get angry and stuff in a little. Okay. But if the spirits are not angry, the mm -hmm. Kwan are able to all come back into place and this, whatever spirit is missing, whatever spirit has left the person who's fallen ill, mm. um, is returned to that person's body. Gotcha. And that person is made whole, made um, healthy again, not whole. Gotcha. So you touched a little bit on this, but how do spirits get angry? How do we? Well, um, spirits get angry. Really, anything that's there's not like again because it's a belief system. Mm -hmm. There's not like a set of like you need to follow these commandments. Gotcha. Um, it's more of like. If you disrespect nature, ah, if you okay. like, so even if you wish any type of evil will on like an animal or a plant, that can cause calamity. It can mm -hmm. cause disaster. It can mm -hmm. cause death. Um, or um, by contrast, if the spirits are calm, you can get the gift of birth, gift of a new life in this world. Oh. Um, but the spirits get angry, basically like that. Gotcha. So so you um you don't do right by nature. Um, and that can cause the spirits to get uh, get angry. Get angry so, right. um, so that's one of the ways we. So we covered a few a few traditions. Tell me a little bit more about um, shamanism. What okay. is shamanism? So, well, um, shamanism, shamanism is basically. So there's a supreme like preacher, I guess, what you would call an animist preacher called a shaman. Oh, okay. Who's believed to be able to. Um, he's believed to be able to just communicate with all natural beings. So mm. people go to temples. Or mm -hmm. So there, I guess there is a form of worship, but it's not as like, it's not as like foundational as it would be in some other religions. Mm -hmm. But people go to temples and they'll pray to the shaman mm -hmm. and they'll basically, and then the shaman are believed to, so a lot of, um, a lot of shaman, they'll give the spirits like sacrifices of, of food and water or, mm -hmm. Um, and we'll, there are some things called spirit houses, which we can talk about in a little bit. Okay. But that's basically what shamanism is. It's just the belief that there's one supreme shaman who can communicate and has a relationship with all natural beings. Got it, got it. And so, it is only they who have the power to appease, like the, to appease the spirits the in the spirit. case of disaster. Ah, uh -huh, okay. According to shamanist beliefs. Uh, okay. So it's, it's interesting because um, there are some similarities to... Uh, to other religions mm -hmm. like you know hinduism has temples islam has mosques you mentioned something called a spiritual house yes so what is that? um so a spiritual house it can so just think about like you know your average house mm -hmm. i'm sorry i don't have like a good graphic for all of my visual learners out there okay but i'm gonna try and describe it the best i can okay so let's picture a house like uh -huh. you know pretty average house mm-hmm and sometimes the houses are just made out of wood, you know, like mm -hmm. your houses. Other times, though, they might be made up of, like, these really, like, ornate, colorful mosaics. Okay. Actually, I feel like it'd be really cool to visit one mm -hmm. um, if we ever have a chance. Um, okay. But they could be made out of these really colorful, painted mosaics to attract spirits. Mm -hmm. Now, 
on the porch, does that make some visual sense to you? Yes. Okay. So on the porch, mm -hmm. you have like offerings, you have food, water, um, because the, the idea is that like, kind of like, and one thing I love about animism is there's not a good or a bad spirit. It okay. just is a spirit. Okay. And I think so often we try to label, oh, you're good or you're bad. And those are just such general words that can't be applied to people. Okay. And so animus, animism, excuse me, really mm -hmm. follows that as like, spirits are neither good no, nor bad, but... If a spirit's not well fed, it's kind of like think about like how if a kid is hungry, they're gonna like you know if a baby's hungry, they're gonna get cranky. Got it. If the spirit's hungry, they're gonna not get well cranky. Fed, they're gonna get cranky. Got and it. it. Cause some trouble. I like, like that. Havoc. I like that analogy. But if they're not cranky, if we keep the spirits nice and well fed and mm -hmm. safe in this house that they like feel comfortable in, okay, everything's gonna be great. Got it. Okay. Um, so that makes uh, that makes sense. Um, so then, what is Mana. Mana. So mana isn't like, it is specific to animism, but it's also used to define religion as a concept. Oh. Which I think is really interesting. So mana is basically, it translates to the, um, Ajib, Ajibwe? It's, oh, it's a, it's an, it's an indigenous tribe. And again, my apologies if I'm saying this wrong. That's okay. Um, but it basically translates to the word called, um, manga. Okay. Which is supposed to mean like the influencer. Okay. So it was coined by um, a lot of like various scholars at the okay. time who were, again, this history is not very well documented because it was like years old, it's years ago. Okay. But it was coined by scholars who were trying to um, identify like, okay, what is religion? Like, what does religion uh, mean? Okay. And ma um, mana or manga, which was what it was co coined from, okay. basically means the great influencer. And it's the central idea that religions have influencers and in supernatural. So basically... Mana, as it relates to animism, mm -hmm. is just the belief that supernatural beings are. So they're kind of a mix of all of them. Got it, got it. So, wow, we covered quite a bit. I'm learning quite a bit about uh, about animism. I'm learning where it started, where is it practiced mm -hmm. today, what's basically high level, what it is, and, uh, um, and also, too, some of the some of the ceremonies or traditions mm -hmm. associated with it. Um, so as we're starting to wrap up then, what, what would you want people to, to know well, or take mm -hmm. away from this, uh, this conversation about animism? Well, there was one more like short tradition that I wanted to highlight. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's called the bossy ceremony. Okay. And basically you, um, basically people like tie bracelets together. They make them out of string. They like tie the wrists together as a community. Okay. And it's meant to show like, oh, well, um. It's basically meant to show that you have everyone's kind of interconnected. Mm -hmm. Which again, the idea of like we're all united, we're mm -hmm. all humans. Gotcha. We forget that so often. It's <laughs> it's heartbreaking. But um Gotcha. But um the Bossy ceremony, it's done for newborn children. It's done whenever someone like recovers from an illness mm -hmm. or comes back from like a long journey. Mm -hmm. And it's basically this idea of like you're one of us and we're gonna remind you that you're part of this beautiful community. Mm. And I just thought that was really significant. That is um, really significant. And the last significant, like significant, um, I mean, there are probably other, other versions and diversity we can talk. Mm -hmm. But um, totimis, totimism, mm -hmm. again, I hope I'm saying it right, totemism, okay. Okay. Um, is basically a type of, it's a form of animism mm -hmm. or a belief in animism that rather than you have one supreme shaman, uh -huh. sham, yeah, shaman, uh -huh. tot totemism is more of, every single person has a relationship with a natural being uh -huh. and that natural being whether that be a plant an animal influences their moral um their moral it's basically that 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 like entity is mm -hmm. their spiritual guide so if for example if you were the um if your entity was like a dog if you have like a special kinship with a dog you would likely be very loyal you know all the so if the animal is friendly if the animal is not and so that individual's personality is said to be determined by their nat supernatural entity. Oh. They are guided by, which is kind of cool. Okay. So what would I want you to take away? I mean, we like you said, I mean, we covered a lot, and I, I just can't express how grateful I am to be here with you today because mm -hmm. so many times, um, and largely because of the history, which we could get into. But mm -hmm. it's, you know, we know like. Um, Indigenous religions, cultures, and traditions are often erased, mm -hmm. and they're often like 
there's a lot of effort put in, especially by like colonizers, mm -hmm. to destroy and not preserve cultures. Mm -hmm. And so I would just urge each and every one of you, you mm -hmm. know, who listen to this, to mm -hmm. educate yourselves. You know, if you if you ever have the chance, go to one of these places. You mm -hmm. know, find go to like the local communities, look up, you know, really educate yourself from like credible sources. Like obviously you're not going to go on Wikipedia. <laughs> like we all know that's not a reliable source. Got but, it. Like really educate yourself, educate your communities. If you ever have the chance to talk to someone, take it seriously because there's no greater gift in my opinion than this magic, this magical human connection that comes with fully immersing yourself in all the cultures that make up this big, really wide family called the world. Got it. Well, thank you. Well said, and uh, that's a really nice ending to our to our episode. So thank you, y'all, for listening. We'll catch you on the sure next one. To check out our special um, Black History Month edition. Obviously, that runs past February because we don't need just one month to celebrate the amazingness that African Americans have contributed. Okay. But, yeah. Thank you guys so much. All right. Thank you.